why am I even doing this video? Do you know what happens to me when I go outside these days? It's not fun, people call me an asshole. Asshole. Oh, for good, leave me alone, right? Leave me alone. See, and I'm not gonna pretend it doesn't bother me. Words hurt. But yes, the idea of a WWE and AEW pay-per-view was actually discussed this week by none other than Tony Khan after he was asked about it when he appeared on the Ringer podcast. And this is one of the reasons that I love this man. You can throw any kind of question at him and he will entertain it in an interesting manner because he said, and I quote, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen, but I would be open to talking about that type of thing. It's not crazy, but it's a bold prediction. So there's a man who has remembered you never say never in wrestling. I am not a smart though, <laughs> obviously, look at me. So I am saying there will never be a WWE and AEW joint pay-per-view. Why? Here's why. Our first problem is that neither side would be able to agree on what they were going to call it. I mean, WWE would be going premium live event, and AEW would be going pay-per-view. So before we even got the damn thing off the ground, everybody would be bickering. On a more serious note, though, it's actually because Vince McMahon, if you can believe it, had been offered this before with basically no strings attached. Vince turned around and said no. I am of course talking about WCW and while we got a kind of version of that in 2001 but that doesn't count, this all goes back to the days when Jim Hurd was running World Championship Wrestling and because he was more business focused than he was wrestling focused, he thought, well I know how we can make a ton of money, why don't we do WWF versus WCW? As we know, McMahon does not think this way though and the WWF has to beat everybody else up. So even though Hurd said to him, Vinny, I will let you have full control, <laughs> meaning that Vince McMahon could decide on all the wins and all the losses, he was still all like, it's a negatory, buddy. So all of his guys could have gone over, they could have won in about 8.2 seconds, although I'm sure they would have chatted that one out. But just because, once again, he wants those three initials to be bigger than everything else, and he wouldn't degrade himself by teaming up with someone else, <laughs> he wouldn't do it. Now, this was 30 years ago, but go and watch the WWE product today. Do you really think much has changed? And I would say the answer is no. Even though we are in 2022, if McMahon could have it his way, he would still go around and crush everybody into dust while shouting, well, it's not my fault, it's just what's good for the industry. I mean, it would absolutely be awesome, but let's say we now put Tony Khan and Vince McMahon in the same room with this mentality in mind. Do you really think there's gonna be a conversation where it's like, oh, maybe Kenny Omega can go over Roman Reigns or Wardlow can beat Randy Orton? Of course there's not. Now I'm getting excited thinking about it because I'm a mega nerd, especially with the Cody Rhodes tie-in. Oh my gosh, that would be incredible. Sometimes you've got to be a negative Nancy and I just can't see it going down. So I am sorry to be the pool bearer of bad news, but there is more evidence for this because actually in 1990, WWF did change their minds and they said, oh, hey, all Japan, hey, new Japan, why don't we do a mega show? And this went down to the Tokyo Dome and it was a success, but honestly, when you go and read about what happened before and what happened afterwards, well, it was a little bit of a mess. The twist is the event itself was actually all right, although you did get lots of stuff like the WWF champion, the Ultimate Warrior, taking on Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, because once again, they couldn't come to an agreement here, so we just had WWF matches. This did balance out though, because Hulk Hogan defeated Stan Hansen, Tenru beat Randy Savage, and Bret Hart went to a draw with none other than Tiger Mask. So this was like Christmas, it was so crazy. But again, everything around it just left all parties to go, no, I don't want to do it again. We still did get another relationship with another Japanese company, this time Super World of Sports, but they were so small compared to the WWF, they weren't going to kick off. So once again, Vince McMahon knew he had all the power and it was different because he wanted to grow his brand in the East. Believe you me, if SWS had been an American promotion, he would have said no way. And yes, to the geeks amongst you, like my good self, it was on one of the years events when Katow was wrestling Earthquake and halfway through the match just told everyone, oh yeah, by the way, wrestling's fake. And then he tried to shoot on John Tenter. If you don't know that story, Google it right now, it's gonna blow your mind. Zoom forward a few years and it did kind of happen again. We had an exception because ECW guys started turning up on Raw. But when you read about this, one, McMahon basically saw them as a developmental territory and two, he thought they were no threat whatsoever and actually it would benefit to him because he could send his young up and coming stars to go and get some work. It also meant you had the likes of Taz and RVD going the other way, but every single time they made an appearance, they've talked about this, 
They had their backs up because they felt like everybody else was just gonna bury them. Does that sound like a good working relationship? No. And even when you get two parties that are happy to work with each other, such as Ring of Honor and New Japan, which was a pretty successful relationship for a long time, there are still issues. Because do you remember that Madison Square Garden show in 2019? Believe you me, when it came to officials, not everyone was happy. And this extended out to fans as well, because we all remember the conversation of people going, oh man, well this match went too long, and why was that match there? And again, it's just because people were going tit for tat because they wanted to make sure that their promotion didn't look like a part of crap. Obviously since then, AEW and NJPW have smashed it with things like Forbidden Door and a bunch of surprise appearances, but you could also make the debate that maybe, just maybe, if New Japan hadn't been really damaged by the pandemic, they never would have done this. And even if Vince McMahon was in the same boat, he would rather sink his ship than reach out for some help. I mean, if he does get moved to one side, which probably should happen by the time you are seeing this, I think there's such a culture that just run through the hallways of world wrestling entertainment that even the successor would be like, no, <laughs> we're above these jabrones, we do our own thing. I mean, it'd be like Disney reaching out to Netflix. It's not going to happen. And do not get me wrong, I want this to happen more than anything in my entire life, to the point I sat down and I thought about it, and I have come up with a 10 match card. That I'm gonna share with you right now. Number one, The New Day versus The Young Bucks. Number two, Drew McIntyre versus Wardlow. Number three, Thunder Rosa versus Sasha Banks. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, maybe happening soon. Number four, Roman Reigns versus Kenny Omega. Number five, John Moxie versus Seth Rollins, because I'm that guy. Number six, The Street Profits versus The Lucha Brothers. Number seven, Hangman Adam Page, and I mean it, versus Baron Corbin. Number eight, Becky Lynch versus Britt Baker. Number nine, AJ Styles, never saw it coming, versus MJF. And number 10, Orange Cassidy versus Sami Zayn. So that's a good way to finish. You're now flipping out in the comments saying, Simon, how could you not mention this person and how could you not mention this match? That's the whole point, man, bro, dude, lady, kid, auntie. I want to stoke your fires and I want you to get commenting. It's called being on YouTube. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know, seriously, what do you think about this? Could we ever see a WWE versus AEW pay-per-view, a joint one where they're both working together? And if so, what should be the card? And also, what should be the win percentage? Because you'd have to imagine it's gonna have to be 50% one side and 50% the other side. And how the flub do you get away with that? Then make sure you like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come follow us on social media at WhatCultureWWE and Simon316. And look, we got a ton of videos like this where we're just trying to have fun. Don't take it too seriously, because that's not the point. Go check them out. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And I will say, given that we did bring up the invasion briefly, I actually think you would get a better show when you have separate company and separate company. Because the problem when WCW was folded into WWE was that for the last five or six years, WWE fans have been told <laughs> WCW is a pile of crap. If those guys came over here, we'd whoop them. So when it was time to pull the trigger, they didn't have anybody in their corner, so they got whooped had someone like a Tony Khan who could be like, no, I'm going to put in some protection here. Well, you take my point. But again, I wouldn't hold your breath, mostly because you'll die. Goodbye.